The first lab that we are going to be doing this year is called Learning Logger Pro. Basically, it's going to help you figure out what this major program is that we're going to use throughout the course of the year. Materials can be found in the lab drawer underneath your computer. There should be a rectangular bin similar to this, and inside you will find a motion sensor and an interface. Note that the cords are nicely wrapped up. Please make sure that when you put everything back in the bin and in the drawer at the end of the lab, everything is nicely and uh, wrapped up and you don't have cords all over the place. So you're going to need these two things. You're going to need to log into the computer and we'll go from there. The first thing you need to do is plug in the interface. That's the large plug. When the power is on, you should hear a little beep. It's its way of saying hello to you. And you know that it is in a power source that is working and that this has powered on. The other cord, which is connected here by the USB symbol, is going to need to connect to the computer. It just goes into a USB drive, and this is the part of Logger Pro that's going to actually take the information from the motion sensor and format it properly for the computer. Last, you have to plug in the motion sensor. Once you have the cord unwrapped, you're going to take a look. You'll notice that there are uh, plugs on either side. You'll find the side where the plug is going to fit. For this one, it's Dig Sonic 1 or 2. You can plug that in, and you should be set and ready to go. Once you have all of this plugged in, you're going to open up Logger Pro on your computer. When you open up Logger Pro on your computer, it should already register that there's a motion sensor here, and open up graphs that are position versus time and velocity versus time. This motion sensor is going to be able to measure where, how far away you are at every point, and as that position changes, it'll be able to calculate the velocity for you. We're also going to see eventually that you can change this to an acceleration versus time graph. Now there's a couple of things that you need to be careful of with the actual motion sensor. Uh, you need to make sure that it is pointed at the person. If it's pointed too far down, it's simply going to create bad data because you're going to be finding the position of the lab table. Same thing as if it's pointed too far up, you're going to be taking the motion of the ceiling. Neither of these are going to change. You're not going to register good information. You want to keep it nice and straight, pointed directly at your lab partner that will be walking. And the lab partner that's walking is going to want to hold a whiteboard. The reason you're holding a whiteboard is because it gives the motion sensor a better surface to hit and bounce off of. Once this starts collecting data, you're going to hear it go beep, 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 and that's its way of sending a signal out and collecting the signal to find your position. So, once you have this all set up, you're going to be finding the graphs for different motions that your lab partner will be walking or not walking. Uh, in part one, it's standing without motion. Part two, you will be walking towards the motion sensor. Part three, you're going to be walking away. You should know this already or go through now and make your predictions. To collect the data, you will notice, and I'll give you a nicer screenshot of this uh, beneath this video, there's a little green button that's called collect. One lab partner will want to hit this, while the other one is over here walking to and from the actual sensor. You'll notice that this only collected for a certain amount of time, and that was the time that you heard that little clicking sound. Um, again, you want to make sure you're using this to do the motion, or as you were walking to and from, because it's going to give it a better surface. Once you have collected your data, you are going to take a look at this. You're going to want to determine where you have good data, where you have bad data. You can highlight and zoom into different portions. You can change how this is actually moving. There's a little stopwatch icon that's helpful for that. 
And finally, you're going to want to look at an acceleration versus time graph. To find that acceleration versus time graph, you're going to go and hover your mouse over the word position or over the word velocity. Once it's over that word, you should see a little Y beneath the arrow. You're going to right click on that little Y, or you're going to just click regularly on that little Y, and it'll bring up a list of different options, either position, velocity, acceleration, all of the above, time, or more. If you click acceleration, you'll notice the graph has changed. It is no longer a position versus time graph, but now an acceleration versus time graph. If you put all three on, you will notice it looks all kinds of crazy because it shows a line that designates the position, a line that designates the velocity, and a line that designates the acceleration. These are the graphs that we are going to be using throughout the course of the actual lab and throughout the course of the year. Overall, today, you're simply going through, you're making some predictions, you're creating the graphs, and you're becoming familiar with this program. Don't forget to play around with the program to find the enlarging portion, changing sampling time, and making sure that you can change between distance, velocity, and acceleration. That's pretty much it for Larger Pro. All you're going to do from here is put your materials away, making sure that those cords are wrapped up, and that everything retur is returned to the drawer underneath your computer. Thanks, and have a great night.